was the most challenging aspect? Outside mm. of finding Kylie, mm. what was the most challenging aspect mm-hmm. of bringing your vision of telling mm-hmm. this story to life mm-hmm. while staying true mm-hmm. to Christy and Annabelle's story? Mm-hmm. Well, I think you just said it, you know. There's always that challenge um, of being truthful to the real characters, but also making a movie. That's always the first challenge. But the second challenge in this one for me was, you know, I'm dealing with a very dramatic subject matter, right? When you're in a situation like that, you suffer. And when you suffer, you cry. And it's true. But movies don't normally shy away from that. You know, they don't want any any suffering on the screen because it pulls people away. So for me, the challenge was how do I make I make a really entertaining, fabulous movie, and not shy away from the truth, which is a very dramatic, dramatic story. Mm-hmm. And that's you know the balance that I'm hoping that I achieved I in which great. people are going to cry, but they're going to laugh and they're going to come out happy. When you read the script, were you concerned or did you have any trepidation mm-hmm. of executing the visual poetry of this film to match the emotional resonance? Oh, I had a lot of concerns when I read the script. Um, I, again, you know, first one being that, you know, creating a very visual cinematic experience. Um, so it was about working with the writer, bringing all those elements in mm-hmm. so that then when I, I like to work, put everything I, I can into the script. So when I get to the shoot, I feel strong. I feel safe. Mm-hmm. I feel like. I got it on the page, you know, as much as you can, you yeah. know. And then from there, you can take it to another level. But you already put a lot of stuff that needs to be in the script, otherwise they don't give it to you later. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, I just try to inject a lot of that, you know, all the visual stuff, but then also all the universality of the story, too. You know, I didn't want to make a movie that was for one type of person only. I wanted mm-hmm. to make a movie that everyone could relate to, if you're religious or if you're not religious or if you're a little bit religious. Um, and, you know, that is open for interpretation. Mm-hmm. It doesn't give you a single point of view and wants you to believe in it. It just lets you it lets you read it from your own perspective. Well, first, I'm very lucky with Checo. He's very talented, and he's very fast, and he's very resourceful, and he always says yes to everything, and and he really wants the best for the movie, you know, so that it's good. It's a great thing, and we didn't, you know, we, we have challenges, a lot of challenges, because we didn't have a lot of time, and I was facing the fact that I was working with a little girl, and that means very reduced hours through the day. And so it was tough. And somehow he managed to give me so many beautiful sunsets. I don't Mm. know if you noticed. So many beautiful lighting moments. Um, Trying to think about the way we shot the movie. You know, we had challenges like spending so many days in one single hospital room Mm -hmm. and making it always look different and always approaching it differently in the Mm -hmm. way we shot it and and in its light so that we wouldn't feel bored and we wouldn't feel Mm -hmm. like we're constrained you know we feel the passage of time time. the way you shot it it of time but it's the light also it's the way I shoot it and it's the light because I always I'm very aware of that so I come in in a different way so every time I, I, I would go into that room, I would find a different angle from where to, to, to work, the, you know, so this way, you know, and I would yeah. create this way. And then when, if, if we switch around and we sit the other way, we're going to have a different feeling mm-hmm. for this room. So then this way, you know, and, and just always keeping in mind that the constraints to make the best out of them. and Because mm-hmm. we don't have, like, the budgets of the big movies, you know? 
I wish I had one I day. Experience. Very difficult. Um, you know, we had basically three trees in a way. We had the real tree, well, the real tree, the tree that we built in the house. Mm -hmm. um, that's a complete build. And then, then we had in, inside a, in a stage, we had an, the inside of the tree. And also in the real tree, we had inside. You know, in the in the built tree. In the built one. So you know, it was built with in parts, and it was shot in parts, um, and um, and in heaven, you know, I was thinking, you know, how do you approach something like that? It's so tricky, and of course, nature mm -hmm. was my answer. Nature, you know, as long as I stay close to nature, I think. I'll get away with it because nature is by all means like a creation of God mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't fight the idea of God and um, and so we found a spectacular we were very lucky because they had just opened a spectacular beautiful garden in Atlanta mm -hmm. that a man just built for over 15 20 years um, and who his job in his life, his business was gardening. And through this whole time, he built this, this garden and then he, he opened it for the people oh. as a gift, you know, to the world. And so that, that pond, those trees, all of that is in that place. It's really, really magical. It's really beautiful. It took my breath away, mm -hmm. especially when you do the added effect of dissolving the pond into mm -hmm. Monet's garden mm -hmm. at Caverne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is oh, such I'm a... Oh, I'm so glad you grasped it. You it's know. such a beautiful time. Well, Monet mm -hmm. is my favorite artist. Oh. And so, I, first I see the museum piece, uh -huh. and I'm like... And then when you bring it back through that, oh. I was just... Good. I'm heart, so happy. My heart stopped, Patricia. Oh, it was so beautiful. I'm so happy. Beautiful. I'm so happy because, you know, I make, I, you make this, I make these decisions and it's always a risk. And, you know, I said, let's go for Monet. You know, let's go for Monet. And I came up with this Monet in this... I, I took her to this museum. You know, I created it, of course, in a wall. But you know, I, in the story, I said, "Let's let's let's have her visit a museum and look at a Monet, and then the Monet will be part of the inspiration for for her journey to heaven." Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I I did all the research on Monet, and I found that big one. It's at the MoMA, and we have, we purchased the rights, you know, to, to, use, to it. use it, and uh, and then how to replicate it, how to bring it in a, in a very poetic way mm -hmm. so as to, you know, not be ex completely explicit, mm -hmm. but suggested and it's there, you know? You know what, I, I, again, we got lucky because Atlanta has this stunning aquarium. It's one of the best aquariums in the world. And when I saw it, I'm like, okay, this is the city where we're going to shoot because I want this aquarium. I wanted to have as many visual moments as I could with this movie. Mm -hmm. Again, for the reason of let's let the audience have a good journey. It's a very painful story. And if I don't give them the, that, that breath of air and those visual moments, what, what am I going to give them? Mm -hmm. Only pain, you know? So that's how I came up with all those moments to just really let the audience have good, beautiful, easy moments and then bring them back mm -hmm. to the pain of the of this story. What did you take away from making? You personally take away from mm -hmm. the experience of making this film? Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing easy. That's the first thing, you know, I thought making a movie in a controlled environment after being in a mine would be easy. Um, there's nothing easy ever. 
Um, you know, I I don't know. That's a very good question. I I know I learn every day um, from everything I do. Um, as a woman director, I need to keep growing always and fighting and and working really hard to be better. It nothing comes easy to us. We gotta really really fight for the things we get. And um, and my steps have been small, but consi- consistent. Mm-hmm. Last so, um, I think that the one of the things I'm very proud of in the movie is, you know, when I first read it, I felt that I didn't want to make a movie that would only speak about one single miracle that would very seldomly happen to people, mm-hmm. you know. Because there's so many people that are suffering out there that would that I wanted everyone to have something to take away from it, not just you know the one person that was had that got the gift mm-hmm. of a of a thing like this. So I really wanted to make this movie about the miracles that are all around us. Um, that's the way I see life myself. Mm-hmm. I see. I know there's people around that have, that that are like angels that come in different moments in our lives and help us out and give us a little push or save us from a difficult circumstance and and uh, and I just wanted to open it up to to that message that through difficult times you know there's a lot of, of goodness also around that help you through those moments we need to be aware and open our eyes to that and that's how I you know how we came up I came up with the miracles and and all these people that were doing all these things to help them out and I think it it opens up the message to a bigger Mm -hmm. to a bigger thing even than a miracle than a single miracle.